This Steve Jones Show podcast is now loading. The Steve Jones Show podcast is presented by Sunbury Motor Company, Purdy Insurance, Brewers Outlet, and NIL Game Changers. Bringing you an in-depth look at Penn State sports and more. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. The Steve Jones Show is presented by Purdy Insurance, Brewers Outlet, NIL Game Changers, and Sunbury Motor Company. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. And this half hour of the show being brought to you by Anna, being brought to you by our great friends. At Brewers Outlet, Reagan Street in Sunbury, the beverage supermarket. Imports, domestics, microbrews, the best selection of beer anywhere. Wine coolers, water, soft drink, lots and lots and lots of snacks. You're going to need them to get through all the wrestling and basketball this weekend. Six great flavors of slushies, pickle bar, led by the barrels and the dills, my two favorites. Indeed, second to none. All at Brewers Outlet, Reagan Street in Sunbury, the beverage supermarket. And we're in the Sunbury Motors studio, Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury, Sunbury Motors, Kia. Routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf and online at sunburymotors.com. As I said before, one of the great things that happened this season in bringing Mike Rhodes in is I got to spend a lot more time with Pat Flannery, whether it's just conversation or dinners. Hello, my friend. Welcome. Hey, Steve, how you doing? Did doing you miss great. me? Of course I did. Who wouldn't? <laughs> <laughs> My wife. <laughs> uh, oh, geez. You're, you're preaching to the choir. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, they, I, got, they get... I, I got that look. Please tell me there's a game this week. No. <laughs> you got that look that you're around too much. <laughs> yeah, you know, I know. Now I got a list. Uh, what was it like for you being around this season and to see the job that Pat and his staff did, or excuse me, to see the job that Mike and his staff did in taking uh-huh. all the various parts and crafting it into a team, especially the last six weeks of the season? Yeah, Steve, I, I, I think you uh, being around together for this long, you know the, the, how I feel and, and the feeling about Penn State. I I thought that uh, w- what a great experience, first of all, um, to just be around the program and to be around the people at Penn State. But within the program, I mean, obviously, Coach has, has done great things. And, and, you know, Michael's grown so much in this in this world of coaching. Um, that he's a veteran. I mean, he knows what he's doing. But the other parts of this, to see Jamal and, and Brent Scott and, and, and these guys, they've been working together, uh, Jimmy Martelli, they've been all together. And then, uh, you know, th- throw in one of your, your, your Penn State legends and Joey Crispin. Um, I, I just felt they all played their, their role so beautifully. And, and the part of that is, is I think every one of their kids got better, Steve. I mean, I think they got better from the beginning of the year to the end. And let's face it, they didn't know a whole lot about a lot of these kids when they came on campus. I mean, they knew them because maybe they recruited them or they were in the portal or they did their homework, but they didn't know what they were getting. Um, who would, who would step in front of somebody who would make the good pass, who would make the, who could make free throws under pressure. And I just thought that it was so cool to watch this thing grow and, and just keep getting better and better that I, mean, I know they didn't want it to end, but it was really neat to see that kind of development. And I, I, uh, I, I'm so glad to, to be around it. There's another part, too, and we'll get it from the coaching point of view here. Because Mike and his staff come in, and you know, and they've faced Power 5 programs repeatedly at VCU. I got it. Mm-hmm. But it's a steady diet of one Big Ten team after another. And that means new scouting reports one after another. What does that take for a staff to then adapt to a new league and some of the people in that league Right, and what does it say about the staff that they were able to go out and, and win ten games in the conference, like they did, including the conference tournament? Well, I, I think it's a great question, and it's it's really deep into what coaching and the mindset is all about. Because I looked at the league, and I even found myself now, Steve. I wasn't a an expert on the Big Ten, but haven't gone through it. I find myself now rooting for some of these teams because I know them so well. 
And I think when you take a staff that goes from VCU, a tremendous Atlantic 10, a, a great conference with a lot, but they've been there for so long, they knew the teams, they could recite the players. Uh, I think it, it's an awareness that you have to spend more time and more effort and more energy to be able to get to know these teams and what their tendencies are and where you can go. Meanwhile, you're trying to find out about your own kids as you're trying to play these people and who the matchups would be. So I, I think it takes a tremendous amount. I, I don't think I've ever appreciated understanding a league better than I did this year because I think of the years in the Patriot League, uh, I knew who the teams were. I knew who the kids were from freshman to sophomore to junior. It's a whole new world right now. Um, you don't know who you're going up against uh, sometimes until just the season starts or until you get to or until you get to Minnesota or until you get to, to Iowa City. So it's, uh, it's certainly a great challenge. I think it's one that they did a tremendous job. They're very organized. They're very detail-oriented. But I think being together um, and being together as a staff for so long, Steve, I, I think that it was a was a great big plus for Coach and his staff that, that they did know each other so well. How important has it been in the NIL part of it that you have it, it painstakingly, and you've done it because you think the world of Mike, but tried to establish relationships that can then open doors on NIL? Well, those relationships, uh, much like, you know, much like, well, it's recruiting. So regardless of where you're recruiting or who you're recruiting, it's a different world now where if you lost a kid and it was down to four of you and you lost a kid, um, it was kind of, okay, he left, and now we're going to try to beat his brains in when we see him. And, you know, we'll be respectful, but he didn't want to be part of my family, so we'll go get him. Well, the mindset now has to be is you never know what's going to come around. You don't know what's going to happen next year because it's a year-to-year thing. And I think that's allowed guys like Coach Rhodes uh, to become – they're really CEOs now. They have to look at all the big picture, whereas I felt when I was coaching them, I mean, you, you X and O'd, you recruited, you got in-house, you raised a couple dollars, and you went out and played the game. And that's what you did. And now there's so many more components to it. And the NIL has certainly created an enormous amount of those challenges. And so did the transfer portal, the way it was opened up recently to the kids can just move as they go. So, so yeah, to, to answer that, the NIL is, is, uh, is, is probably complicated, more complicated in some places than others. Um, but it's, uh, it's been told to me all year long, and I finally probably wised up being around it for the whole year that it's here, and you better adapt to it, and you better understand it, not just as a coach, but as a university and as an athletic department you better understand it because it's not going anywhere. What did it mean to you that Mike asked you to be involved like that? You know, because it, just to be a part of what was going on. Well, again, Steve, you know me too well. I, you know this this would not have happened uh, outside yeah. of my my two my two boys maybe and <laughs> maybe one or two other play, other players in my That's lifetime. Right. Um, yeah. But uh, I've known this guy since I'm a kid or since he's a kid. Uh, greatest respect. We've we've been in, uh, together for a long time, even even when he was other places, and you know, enjoying myself down in the Hershey area. And uh, I follow ball, re- you know, religiously. And I have a son coaching, so I've always been on the, you know, I've stayed in it for a long time. I just haven't been around it on a daily basis. And uh, at first, it was like, come on, coach, you're like you're you're just trying to do an old timer. You're, you're trying to do, give an old timer a, a little juice. <laughs> and then, as it went along, and as we got talking, and he talked about things like, uh, coach, <coughs> I need somebody, you know, I can trust that I can count on that is outside of my inner circle here, and and yet you are in my circle, and be honest. And I I think our conversations, I think he's he's gotten what he wanted out of it, and he certainly has given me. Um, I mean, just a wonderful year of, of basketball uh, to be around these kids and, and to be around the program. It's it's really been special. I mean, it's it's uh, you know I can't say at sixty six that travel and some of the things we do, as you know, <laughs> doesn't wear you out. But uh, but at, at the same time, uh, we only get one time to do this, and I, I appreciate Coach even thinking of me. But uh, it's it's been wonderful. Now we just got to get his family up there so he can yeah. have a lot of time with his family and not with Pat yeah. Flannery. Yeah, well, in fact, he was yesterday. He was in Richmond watching Porter play lacrosse, and when he texted me, right. Porter and Porter already had three goals when he texted me because he told me. <laughs> he, he told me. So yeah, but isn't isn't 
isn't that though, Steve, right, with, with all the guys and all the people that you know, and I, you don't need to name them, but you think about your most special people that you've, you've learned in your years and years of sports, and I feel the same way. Folks that have that family component and understand oh. that there's a lot more, a lot more than the game. They're just more honest guys. They're just more regular guys that you that are easy to cheer for. And being that he's homesick for his family and all, you you wouldn't expect anything else. It's got to be really rough. And uh, and yet at the same time, uh, I'm not going to cry for him. This is his job, and they they compensate him, and it's something he wants to do. So he'll figure it out. But it is kind of neat to hear about the the kids and where they're at and what they're you know what they're doing and. Once they get up there with them and that gets squared, I, I know that will be a, a tremendous burden that's that's taken off his plate. Yeah, but it's a more balanced life for the coach. And the, yeah, the, the other part is it? the the young people. So whether it's James Franklin or Mike Rhodes or or a Kale Sanderson, when they see the family around like that, it sets an example. I think for them about how important that element is. Don't you think? Well, it, it, it does, and, and probably we have the benefit of experience that, that we've been through it. Uh, certainly you've been through it. I've been through it where I think there was a day, I mean, I think of the Vermeil days and all. We used to think that's a badge of honor. Um, great mm-hmm. coach sleeping in the offices, oh. you know, don't go home. Uh, I mean, I went went through it in a, in a stage when, when I retired where you're thinking the next one, you, you, you win a game in the NCAA, you think you can go to the lead eight, you think you can go to four. Yep. That's just the way we built. And I think the modern-day coach, and that's why I have so much respect for coach, um, I think the modern-day coach, and I, I mean it sincerely, I think they recognize the balance that you have to have. But I think it's because of sports psychologists like uh, Dave Eukelson, yeah. who, who people that have, have put this in your mind and made it a real honest-to-goodness conversation to say, wait a second, what am I doing? I, I yeah. need to get home for that game. I need to see them grow up. I need to coach the Little League team in June. Um, and so, so I think they have the benefit of that. Now, whether you can translate that into actually executing and being a balance, I, I just admire guys that can do that, and I, I think Mike does that in spades. Guess who coached Little League together? Dave Eukelson and I were together in the same staff a couple of years. Oh, what Oh, what! I wouldn't have wanted to be a shortstop on that team or a catcher. Oh, 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 oh. I would have done anything for that oh. for that experience. Oh, just to be a fly in the wall for that. I, I would have liked to have been an umpire for that game. Oh, yeah, I can imagine the first guy you throw out. <laughs> your, your dinner partner in Nebraska. <laughs> You're right. You're oh, right. Oh, bad. my word. That's a picture that's an image i'm trying to i'm trying to look at you two coaching little league that was <laughs> i think we won a game uh, all right so <laughs> uh you know i was talking earlier about quote upsets right uh, and the quote underdog doesn't consider it an upset because they come in with confidence you've coached in this before when you see the greg campies of the world you see what the guys of sanford are doing you've done that before what was always the mindset that you felt was the right balance for your team when they're going into what the public perceives as david versus goliath but you just think you're playing basketball yeah well i think there's i think there's two things to that one is what what just recently happened uh last last night watching campy uh they're up four and there's four seconds to go and he's not smiling I mean, he's not smiling. He, yeah. He's still coaching them because a kid made a bonehead play with four seconds and he did something. <laughs> so you're, you're so you're so in the moment that people don't understand. Wait, the game's over. The guy should be happy. But you're so in the moment that yep. you just you just. I, I know I didn't forget it. I, I I was in the locker room and one of the kids looked at me and said, "Like, is this guy real? He's talking about <laughs> getting on the bus and getting ready for Wisconsin. We just beat Kansas." And finally, the kids looked at me and they, their jaws were open. And I finally jumped in the air, and we all went crazy. <laughs> but up to that point, I was still in the moment. The right. other thing that's so important, uh, and it happened to Oakland, happens to anybody that does that, these, these teams aren't real. I mean, yes, they can say these are upsets, and they are because you're the underdog. But yeah. most of the teams that win in the tournament, at some point, they have had success in their season that's against right. people that look, that look like Kansas. So in, in our world... We had beaten Pitt at Pitt. We beat Syracuse at Syracuse. And yep. people forget that because of the, 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 the table you're on in the NCAA. I'm not saying we went in there thinking we were going to, you know, we were going to beat them. Well, no, we did think we were going to beat them. But it doesn't happen until you get to, to that 
that eight minute mark, that four minute mark. Because halftime, you know, you're there and you're, you know, you're you're still holding on, holding on, hoping and and playing your butt off. And then all of a sudden, you get the six, you get the four, you get the three, and you go, you know what? Uh, we're we're going to win this thing. And I think that's kind of the mindset. And that was the mindset of, of Oakland uh, uh, last night. Kentucky missed a couple a couple dunks. They missed a couple runouts. All of a sudden, the kid makes a big one. And you're saying, you know what? We're, we're going to do this. We, we're going to pull this off. So I think the confidence going in that you've at least looked like the people you're playing against, I think that's very important for officials and for everybody there that you have some size, um, you, you have some skill, you have the, the ability to handle pressure. And then I also think that you've had to play a schedule um, that we always played really tough schedules so the kids weren't intimidated. One of the really neat things for me about this past season was going out to a couple dinners with Pat and how much basketball I learned and also more about the life of it just by being around him. I can't thank you enough for that. It it meant a lot to me. Thanks Uh so much for taking the time. Well, Steve, I, I, back at you. You're an institution in uh, Central PA, wherever you broadcast. And I've known a lot of you, and you've always treated, uh, when we've come to, to State College, great respect. And I knew what I was getting into with the whole organization up there. And it's certainly first class, and, and it starts certainly with the, with the voice of the, the Lions. And uh, it's, a, it's a mutual admiration. So I, I can't thank you enough for yeah. For taking an old timer under your wing oh, and are you giving me, me that, that giving me that Penn State background because you're an institution, buddy. You started talking about some of these names. Um, I thought I knew Penn State until you get around you and you start telling me about their this Orange Bowl and that. And I, I walked away. I've become a big Penn State fan. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, now that I've mentioned about the Uke thing, I mean, I don't hold that against me. All right, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's the best. He was my boy. I, I love him. Oh, my goodness. Pat, thanks so much, my friend. Appreciate you more than you know. Thank you for having me, and have a great weekend. I hope your bracket's going well. Thanks. appreciate it. <laughs> it's been All right, destroyed. Buddy. All right, see ya. It's been destroyed. Take care. All right. Thanks, Steve. Bye-bye. Spring has sprung, and it's time to dust off those insurance policies. For over 100 years, the Purdy Insurance Agency has been protecting families and businesses of the greater Susquehanna Valley and beyond. With the experience of our trained and knowledgeable staff, you can rest assured that your needs will be evaluated and met by some of the industry's best representatives. No matter what your insurance needs are, call Purdy Insurance today at 570-286-5855 or visit our website at purdyinsurance.com to see what we can do for you. Mm-hmm. When car repairs get difficult. Well, I, I just don't know. Um, me neither. We get good. Sunbury Motors. More than quality new and used cars, Sunbury Motors specializes in complicated auto repair diagnosis. They can handle intricate repairs and even complete auto body with service open Monday through Friday, 7 till 4. And Sunbury Motors has made simple repairs easy. Maintaining your vehicle is necessary. Finding the time to do it is difficult. Welcome to Sunbury Motors Quick Lane. Just walk in or call ahead. Relax in their remodeled waiting room with Wi-Fi, beverages, and snacks. Will Sunbury Motors factory trained techs take care of your oil change, tire alignments, brakes, and inspections? Quick Lane, 6.30 to 6, Monday through Friday, Saturday, 6.30 till 2. Sunbury Sunbury Motors, Ford and Hyundai, North 4th Street, Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. We take the Mm -hmm. out of auto repair.